Here we are, another day. This is the slab that we uh, worked on the other day. And since the last video, I sanded it a bit. And it came out pretty good. Nice and smooth. I put a coat of Danish oil on it. Only because I'm trying to use it up. I had some Danish oil left over from another project. And what I'm going to put on here, I'll show you. Be right back. Got three products here. This is a water-based product. I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it takes wax. So I use this on the bottom to get rid of it. This is the product I like the most. I put this on everything. It's expensive. It's about 20 bucks for this little quart can. But it waxes nice. It feels nice. It makes the wood look nice. It has a little red tone to it that makes it look orangish, which I like. And these two do not mix. This is water based. This is oil based. Water based, you clean up with water. Oil base, once you use that brush, I got a little trick. I stick it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. And then if you use it within the next week or two, it's still good. Uh, teak oil is something I had left over from a different product, uh, a different project that I was working on. I don't really care for it for this kind of project. It's good for what it's good for, and that's more like your fine furniture and stuff like that. So uh, the reason why I put the teak oil down on this piece right now is because um, oil and oil, these two oils go together and they do well. This one goes well right over the top of this one. This one is something I'm trying to get rid of, I'm trying to use up. And so anything that I can put on here that's oily, that soaks into the wood and dries, will be a good base so I don't have to waste so much of this. So that's what I've got right now. Get these three out of the way, be right back and show you the next step. Even though the overall slab came out in real good condition, looks nice, Wood is beautiful. It's got a nice orangish tone that I like. I still have some bad spots. And you can see I got a bad spot here. Show you with my pencil. Here's a bad spot. Tried to fill it with wood putty. Didn't come out right. Doesn't look good. Here's another bad spot. I've got another bad spot here on the edge. Right here. And this whole board here. A good long piece of this board. Is just a bad board. The grain goes the wrong way. It's sticking up. It's causing me problems. And I've decided that this is going to be a workbench. This will be my main workbench that I use here in my garage. So what I decided to do is I got some different kind of wood. I got oak. These are little oak scraps. Again, I picked these up somewhere and I cut a few little scraps, rectangles, and that's going to be my patch. So I marked them, that shows me the top, that shows me the orientation. Uh, and I also took my pencil, drew around them. And next step is we're gonna take these outside again, beautiful day, get the router back out, and we're gonna route out these holes and stick this patch in, and glue it in. So there's patch number one, patch number two is right here. Patch number three is right here. And this big long patch is going to cover up that big problem I have with this board. And the reason why I wanted to use oak on the edge was because as a workbench, oak holds up a lot better. It's a lot harder wood. And if I put something on the workbench and pound it, or if I want to bend it and hit it with a hammer and I accidentally hit my workbench, it's not going to dent as easy as it would if it was this pine. This pine is extremely soft. It's really not well suited to be a workbench. And my goal is, over time, as I do projects and get the router out, I'm going to keep putting these patches into this. The more I tear it up, the more patches I get, the better it's going to look. I hope to use a whole lot of different kind of woods for this. And you'll just have to bear with me on this because... This will be a continual project that lasts hopefully a good long time. So 
going to get this thing outside, get all set up with my router again. And uh, next time you see me, next time you see this slab, we're going to be starting to work on cutting these patches up. Be right back. Getting set up outside. Again, got the safety equipment. Got the, got these damn things. This is the router base. This is the router right here. And it comes with two bases. It's not a commercial for it. It's just, they're different. This is a uh, fixed router. And when it goes in here, it uh, stays in the same place. And that's what we used the other day. We're not going to use that today. We're going to use a different part. This attachment right here goes up and down. So you push down on this little handle here. Kind of hard to do one-handed. And then that lets it go up and down. And then you can set the depth using this part of how much up and down it goes. The router goes inside here. Same bit we used the other day, except this time we're going to be cutting a lot more, not only on the bottom like we did the other day, but on the side. And same two wrenches to install it. What I'm going to do is put this router inside here, secure it, a little latch on the bottom, on the back here, secure that, set the depth, set up my camera, and then I'm going to start taking this thickness of wood, that's a little bit less than three quarters of an inch, and chop that out of this wood. And in order to do that, I'll go down about half of this depth, maybe a, maybe a third, cut all that out, go again, another third, and then the final depth. And I'll use this little patches. It's important to have your patches already cut and figured out first, because this little patch right here is exactly the depth that I want to go down. In fact, if I'm going to make a mistake, better that this is lower, I mean, better that this is a little higher than it is lower as it sets in the wood and I glue it in because you can always sand it down a little bit and that's actually what I'll go for. I'll try to, I try to, I say I'm going to try to get this exact, I'll actually leave it just a tiny bit high. And so uh, let me go continue to get set up a little bit more and come back and we'll, we'll uh, hopefully have a camera on this router and get a little action going here of gouging out that wood. So be back in a second. So the routering is done. You just need to, you got two choices. You can round off the corner of your patches so they fit in the hole or square up the hole. So I'm going to take a chisel and a hammer, clean up these holes. There's patch number one down here. Patch number two fits in there. Three goes in there. Four fits in there. You need to do a little fine tuning on it with a chisel. And the next time you see this, the patches will all be installed. They'll be Gorilla glued in, sanded flat. Everything will be given a coat of that exterior grade varnish. And this will be over here and become my new workbench and that workbench top will be over here and we're going to do something different with that so we'll see this one more time and uh, thanks for watching